Good afternoon and welcome to Let's Chat with Dr. Celeste MD. I'm your host, Dr. Celeste Reese Willis. I'm your board certified family medicine physician specializing in urgent care. I assist busy professionals to find solutions for their healthcare needs, both acute and chronic. I do this through my primary care, COVID-19 testing, telemedicine, concierge medicine, and with my brand new Amazon best-selling book, Vitality. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As many of you know, this month is March. It's colorectal cancer awareness month. So I thought what we'd do is highlight colorectal cancer and talk about some of the things that we can do to help prevent it because it is uh, preventable to a certain degree. Uh, some of the things we have to do is just kind of know what do we need to do. So what is colorectal cancer? We know that cancer cells develop when the body's normal control mechanisms stop working. So instead of old cells dying as they regenerate new ones, they grow out of control forming abnormal cells. So why are we talking about this? What's one of the main reasons why? Uh, one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring awareness to this has to do with the fact that 12% of colorectal cancers are diagnosed before the age of 50 years old. So that's 12%. So if there are 100 people that have been diagnosed with colorectal cancer, 12% of those are diagnosed before the age of 50 years old. Now, unfortunately, people that are diagnosed that are less than 55 years old are 58% more likely to be diagnosed with a late stage of colorectal cancer than older people. And they did a study about this, the Journal of the National Cancer Institute, and it's largely due in part to delayed follow-up. And why is that? most of the time because when you're younger you think hey colorectal cancer is typically for someone that's older and we'll talk about how age pays a part in this in just a moment but the point here is is that a lot of times when we're younger we think oh this couldn't happen to me because i'm younger right well, what happens is you end up thinking some of the signs and symptoms that we're going to talk about in a moment couldn't apply to you because of your age so Let's talk about uh, colorectal cancer. So first, we'll start off with some of the signs and symptoms of colorectal cancer. Now, a lot of times people can have colorectal cancer and have no symptoms at all. I wanna make sure that is clear. But if you're having any of these signs and symptoms, definitely check in with your physician to find out if you need a colonoscopy or when you need your first colonoscopy if you haven't had it. Some of those signs and symptoms include a change in your bowel habits, uh, diarrhea or constipation or narrowing uh, of the stool that lasts for more than a few days. Sometimes if you have uh, a sensation or you feel like you need to have a bowel movement but you've already relieved yourself or when you do relieve yourself, you still have that sensation of feeling, uh, I still feel like I have to have a bowel movement. Third sign or symptom we wanna to highlight today, rectal bleeding, which can be bright red blood. It can also be blood in the stool that's dark brown or black in nature. Uh, you can get cramping or abdominal pain, weakness and fatigue. A lot of times that weakness and fatigue is preceded by anemia. Sometimes patients that have colorectal cancer often bleed into their colon. This can cause you to have anemia, which is a decrease in your red blood cells count that's in your bloodstream, and that can cause you to feel fatigued or feel weak. Uh, this is unfortunately a common symptom. Lastly, unintended weight loss. So if you're losing weight out of proportion to what you're doing if you're exercising dieting that kind of thing and it you know doesn't kind of make sense you might want to think about or speak with your physician to find out hey do i need to be screened uh, for colorectal cancer so let's talk about some of the risk factors okay uh, these are things that make you at increased risk of developing colorectal cancer. Number one is alcohol use uh, that's more than considered moderate. So that's more than one drink a day for women and more than two drinks a day for men. Anyone who has excessive alcohol use is at increased risk of colorectal cancer. Next is obesity. Uh, being overweight puts you at a risk factor for colorectal cancer. Being older, and we talked about age earlier, being older does put you at increased risk. Uh, colorectal cancer is more common after 50. Our conversation before, remember we talked about being younger. It's if you're diagnosed at a younger age, before age, age 55, it's more likely to be a late stage of cancer. So being older definitely puts you at risk, but we wanna make sure that we identify, identify those persons that are less than 55 years old or less than 50 years old that need to be screened, and we'll highlight that in just a moment. 
being physically inactive puts you at risk for colorectal cancer. Another reason benefit for exercising uh, is to help to decrease the risk of colorectal cancer. Certain diets put you at increased risk. Diets that are high in red meats, beef, pork, lamb, liver, processed meats like hot dogs, all those things put you at increased risk for colorectal cancer. Cooking meats at very high temperatures like frying or, bro or broiling uh, creates a chemical that could increase your risk. So next thing is low vitamin D. You know that we talk about this all the time. You know that's one of my favorite topics is talking about vitamin D because as you see, it keeps bringing itself up in different disease processes. So we wanna make sure that we pay attention to our vitamin D level. Okay, smoking. Smoking puts you at increased risk for colorectal cancer. Uh, people that have smoked for a long period of time definitely more likely to develop colorectal cancer, okay? So those are the risk factors. So now we wanna talk about, okay, so what do we do? If you're someone and you're saying, hey, I'm considered to be an average risk person. What are the screening methods? How do I check for colorectal cancer? If you're at average risk, uh, you can use a stool-based test like a fecal, uh, stool blood test, or you can do a stool DNA test. That's the first way is a stool base. Those are the stool based tests. Second way is to visibly look at the colon or the rectum itself. Okay. And you do that via either colonoscopy, which is the gold standard. And you get that every 10 years, or there's also a CT colonography that they do now that gives x-rays and images of your colon. Uh, you can also do a flex what's called a flexible sigmoidoscopy that's done typically every five years. Whether or not or which one you need, uh, you'd have to speak with your physician to find out. There are certain things that play a part with that, especially considering your family history. We're going to get to that in just a moment. So the American Cancer Society recommends for people that are average risk, average risk for colorectal cancer to start screening at age 45 years old. That can be done with either test. Patients that have good health with a life expectancy of more than 10 years will continue to screen every five to 10 years after your first screening, your GI physician or regular physician will let you know, hey, we think you need to come you know, every five years or every 10 years. And they base that in part on number one, what your personal history is, and number two, what your family history is, and anything that has been found on your previous colonoscopies, okay? So typically it's every, it's average risk person is every 10 years, as long as you have a life expectancy of more than 10 years, and you continue that, start at age 45 through age 75 years old. Once you reach 76 to 85 years old, you have to speak with your primary care physician and this is why at that point they do an assessment of what your medical what your personal medical history is to determine hey is does this person need a colonoscopy every five years or every 10 years at all or do they have a disease process that causes them to have a decreased life expectancy that it doesn't uh, quite make sense for this person to continue to get colonoscopies again that's a private consultation with your primary care physician over age 85 years old, we are not doing colonoscopies at all. No colorectal screening, okay? Now, so now let's talk about those people at high risk. People at high risk for colorectal cancer. Number one, we're gonna start screening you before the age of 45 years old. You're gonna be screened more often and you're gonna get a specific kind of test. So let's talk about what places you at high risk. Strong family history of colorectal cancer or of certain types of polyps, like hyperplastic. Uh, we call it hyperplastic polyps. So that puts you at an increased risk. Number two, personal history of colorectal cancer or polyps. So if you've ever had polyps before, or you've had a personal history of colorectal cancer, you're definitely considered at increased risk. Now, thirdly, those individuals that have a history of inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease fall into that category. So if you have ulcerative colitis, which we call UC sometimes for short, or Crohn's disease, you definitely are at high risk. Uh, known family history of hereditary colorectal cancer or polyp syndromes or Lynch syndrome. So in other words, if you have family history of polyp syndromes, then that puts you at increased risk. In addition to that, lastly, people that have had radiation to their abdomen or pelvic area or at increased risk as a result of having had that radiation. So all of those things put you at increased risk. If you are at increased risk, then your screening will be likely to be every five years by one of these methods um, 
that we've discussed earlier. Now, we're going to start screening those individuals though at an earlier age than 45 years old. They're going to start typically at 40 years old. One thing, one question we'll ask though, I'll make sure that you know this because it is possible to have colorectal cancer in people that are extremely young, like in their 30s. It's not common, but it's possible. If you have someone that has colorectal cancer is diagnosed at an age that is a young age, we just want to make sure we start screening you before the age of that family member at that younger age that they are. So in other words, I'll give you an example. If you have a cousin, an aunt, a sister, someone that had was diagnosed with colorectal cancer when they were 38 years old, we're going to want to start screening you at 33 years old. Make sense? Okay. But again, that's a conversation, a private conversation with your physician. I tried to be as inclusive as I could be to give you a good amount of information, but what it boils down to is working on our prevention, which is one of the reasons uh, that we're sharing this today. And a part of the purpose of these Facebook Lives is to help you prevent some disease processes in your life or help you address some things that you may have going on or at least making you aware of the questions that you may need to ask your personal physician. Now, let's talk about prevention, 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 because that is where our money is every time. I promise you that. So. We've already talked about, uh, number one, making sure that you have a regular colorectal screening. That's the primary way to help prevent colon cancer because if you're screened regularly and they find it sooner than it becoming late stage, then a lot of the modalities and technology that we have now are people that have had colorectal cancer able to go on and live very long and productive lives, okay? And that's the point of what we're doing today and our point of trying to stress awareness and prevention, okay? So number two, we wanna make sure that we eat a healthy diet uh, with fruits and vegetables as well as whole grains and low in red and processed meats, okay? So those red meats, you know, even though they taste good, that beef, that pork, having that all the time in your gut is something that will put you at increased risk for colorectal cancer. So you want to minimize these type of foods in your diet if at all possible. Okay. Number three is we got to talk about weight. If you are overweight, if you're considered obese, I encourage you to go ahead and get on an exercise program regimen and diet. See your physician to find out what it is that you do need to do or what they encourage you to do in an attempt to help lose weight uh, and thereby decrease your risk of colon cancer. Number four, physical inactivity puts you at risk. So, and you may say, oh, well, Dr. Celeste, you just said obesity. Isn't that the same thing? No, it's not the same thing. Have you ever heard of something called skinny fat? That's a term that um, I know that some of my patients have even taught to me. But the point of it is, is that just because you're thin doesn't mean necessarily that you're healthy. So we all need to exercise regardless of where you, you stand uh, weight wise, whether you're underweight, overweight, perfect weight, average weight, whatever weight, we all need to exercise is the point. Um, being physically active and increasing the amount and intensity of your exercise over a period of time does several wonderful things for you, including releasing endorphins that cause you to have an elevated mood. It's very good for cardiac conditioning, but in addition to that, it's going to help to decrease your risk of colorectal cancer. So let's be physically active. Today is a great day to go out and be physically active. Go get your vitamin D, spend your 20 minutes or so outside, put your sunblock on before you go, uh, because that's going to do two things. You being physically active, but in addition, you being outside is also going to help with our sixth method of prevention, which is the low vitamin D. So we want to make sure that we are aware, hey, where am I vitamin D wise? Am I someone that has low vitamin D? Am I someone that has, you know, adequate vitamin D? You just want to make sure that you know and make sure that you don't have low vitamin D. If you have low vitamin D, please, 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 please address that. This is uh, something that continues to show, show us in various disease processes. So it's very important, including most recently COVID-19. Okay, last prevention method, alcohol-wise. So if you drink alcohol heavily, I encourage you to pull back on that and stop or at least cut your alcohol use at the very least in half so that you don't decrease or increase rather, I'm sorry, your risk of colorectal cancer. So that's all we had to share with you. I do want to make this point. I know that we uh, talked about colorectal cancer actually uh, a few months ago when uh, real life hero Chadwick Bozeman 
uh, was unfortunately taken from us after his uh, lifetime battle with colorectal cancer while he was bringing us all these wonderful movies, Jackie Robinson, uh, my favorite by far, Black Panther. Uh, but he dealt with this disease process, which can be very rigorous. And he was a young person that went through that. So what, and, and what he did with what, it, it, what he did is basically inspire us, right? While he's fighting colorectal cancer, which must have been very, very challenging, very, very challenging for him. So we want to make sure that we bring awareness to this. The fact that we lost him at such an early age, even though he's had the incredible impact all over the globe that he's had, uh, that we lost him at such a young age, uh, just begs us to bring awareness to this topic. And so that's what we're trying to do today. And so we definitely... I want to remember him while with this episode that we're doing today of our Facebook Live of, of Let's Chat. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, if this information has been helpful for you, I encourage you to share it with your family and friends or anyone that you think could benefit from it. OK, uh, anyone have any questions in particular? Thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you guys are having a happy Sunday. I hope that everyone is staying safe. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Hi, Miss Jones, Miss Pat, Miss Dunbar, Miss Brown, and Miss Black. And Teresa, hi. Hi, Miss Golson, how are you? And hi, Miss Brown, Mary Brown, how are you? So that's all we had to share with you guys today. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you're someone that is in need, of colorectal screening, see your physician. If you don't have a primary care physician, I'm more than happy to help you if you live here in the Birmingham or surrounding area. Uh, number of contact for my office is to area code 205-291-8842. Again, 205-291-8842. And again, we are continuing to offer COVID-19 testing at Legion Field. So if you're in need of COVID testing, please come out to Legion Field and see us. We're more than happy to take care of you. You can make an appointment on our website at drcelestec19.com. That's D-R-C-E-L-E-S-T-E-C-19.com. Or you can phone us at 205-543-2684. Again, that's our COVID line, 205-543-2684. Said it too fast, had to think about that. Um, so if you're in need of COVID testing, definitely come by and see us. If you are getting the COVID vaccine and there's an issue, I encourage you to get that COVID test prior to getting the vaccine if that is something that you feel like that you need. Okay. All right. All right. So that's all we had to share with today. Hope you guys have a very happy Sunday. Again, go outside, get some exercise and decrease your risk of colorectal cancer, condition your heart, build your immunity and handle your vitamin D all in one fix if you go outside and exercise today, but please be careful, stretch before and after and make sure you hydrate before and after as well. Okay. Thanks for watching everybody and have a good day. Oh, and I forgot to say this. I'm sorry. So in addition to that, so uh, CBS 42 News here in Birmingham and I are partnering together to bring you a new segment uh, every Monday morning at 6.30 a.m. So at 6.30 a.m. on CBS 42 News. Each Monday, um, I will be sharing a topic and we will take questions from the audience. So if you have questions, you can send that to housecalls at cbs42.com. If you send it and it comes back, or if you have a question, you can also inbox me with that question. They prefer, I prefer you to send it to them, but if I've gotten that um, email wrong, which I think maybe I didn't, I think it's housecalls at cbs42.com. I'll make sure I, I'm gonna post later what it is. So it'll be uh, on my uh, social media. So I'll make sure that I put it here in case I got that wrong. But I think that I think I got it right, but we'll see. Okay. So that's all we had to share. You are welcome, Miss Barbie. You are welcome. Hey, Pastor Walker, how are you? I hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you guys are staying safe. Um, any questions, anyone? Any questions, anyone? Okay. Hope you guys have a good day. Happy Sunday. Get that vitamin D, build your immunity, condition your heart by going outside and exercising today and decrease your risk of colorectal cancer all at the same time. Okay. Have a good Sunday. Bye-bye.